Assalamu alaikum dear students I hope that you're all fine by the grace of Allah almighty I'm Aksa Malik and I welcome you all in the week 6 lecture of history Last week we started the Islamic history and you learned about the rise of the Ottoman empire about the Osman 1 and about the Mehmed 2 So today we'll discuss about the other most significant rulers of the Ottoman empire that include the Selim 1 and Suleiman the Magnificent First of all I would like to share the objectives and learning outcomes of today's lecture. So after the lecture students will be able to explain the rule of the Selim 1 in the expansion of the Ottoman Empire, the role of Suleiman the Magnificent as the Sultan of Ottoman Empire and the education system of the Ottomans. So our first topic is Selim 1. Selim 1 ruled Ottoman Empire from 1512 to 1520. He was the ninth sultan. and he also became the first caliph of the ottoman empire now how he became the first caliph in 1517 he added the holy sites of makka and medina to the empire the sharif of makka presented selim with the keys of the holy city as a symbolic gesture by acknowledging him the leader of the muslim world so that's how he got the title of the caliph now selim one expanded the ottoman empire by conquering syria egypt and palestine Now Selim when died in 1520 and his throne was acceded to his son Suleiman who was also known as Suleiman the Magnificent. Now Suleiman became the 10th Ottoman sultan and he came into the power at the age of 26 and he ruled for 50 years. Now why he was called as the Magnificent? The first thing is that his period is called as the golden age of Ottoman Empire and he was also one of the most just and fair ruler of the Ottomans. and he was also known as the law giver secondly he had huge expertise in the government affairs because his father who was selim 1 his father used to entrust him uh, with the governorship of the different regions from the age of 17 he was pretty fluent in the six different languages he was also a poet and a goldsmith and his period was known as the golden age of the ottomans now let's talk about some of the famous conquests of this uh, suleiman The first is the conquest of Belgrade. Belgrade is a modern part of Siberia and at that time it was a fortified city is on the Danube River. Danube River is the second largest river of the Europe and it was under the uh, leadership of the king of Hungary and the city fell to the Suleiman forces. Suleiman along with the, his army he attacked uh, Belgrade and conquered it. So after Belgrade his next target was the conquest of Hungary. and he also defeated the king of hungary who was louis 2 and his next target was the siege of vienna now siege of vienna was not an easy task for the suleiman he made two attempts on vienna and he was unsuccessful in both of them in 1529 he marched on uh, vienna for the first time but uh, the vienna was able to hold them off and the turkish forces they withdrew and finally sultan didn't give up and he made his second attempt but again it was hampered by the rain and the mud so siege of vienna was not a successful task for the suleiman so next is the conflict with the safavid rulers now uh, who were the safavids The Safavid dynasty was one of the most significant ruling dynasties of Iran from 1501 to 1736. As you can see in the map, the Safavid empire is contiguous to the Ottoman empire and they had some border clashes with each other and for that case Suleiman attacked Persia 3 times but he failed. And finally in order to resolve their disputes in 1554 a peace treaty was signed with the Shah of Persia and the issue the border issue between both these states it was resolved. Now let's talk about some of the achievements of the Suleiman the Magnificent. The first was the expansion of the Ottoman Empire. As you can see in the map, the brown areas show the acquisitions of Suleiman I the Magnificent, uh, and the green areas were uh, captured by his father Selim I. The other achievements of the Suleiman the Magnificent include the formulation of the legal system that lasted for 300 years. the overriding law of the ottoman empire was sharia and law and other than that the suleiman he made various criminal laws to establish peace in the region and he was known as the just and the fair ruler he always used to choose his subordinates on merit rather than on social status or popularity so 
He also introduced reforms in the government for good system of administration. He set up a proper administrative structure and he introduced the system of taxation as well. And finally, he promoted Turkish art and architecture. A lot of Turkish art and architecture got promoted during his time period. And a very famous name was Mimar Sinan. He was an engineer and the architect who constructed more than 300 structures during the rule of the Ottomans. So this picture shows some of the artwork of the Ottoman Empire as the first two pictures are the um, Turkish calligraphy and in second picture you can see a depiction of a war in the form of painting. So let's look at some of the very uh, great masterpieces of the Mimar Sinan. Mimar Sinan was, as I told you before, he was the excellent and brilliant engineer and architect of the Ottoman Empire and these are some of his masterpieces. The first is the Silimai Mosque then Suleimani Mosque, Manglova Aqueduct, Topkapi Palace, this has been converted into a museum nowadays, and finally Sultan Suleiman Bridge. Now uh, let's talk about some of the other significant features of the Ottoman Empire. The first was the Janissaries. Now who are the Janissaries? They were the first modern standing army and it was composed of elite infantry units. They, uh, they form the Sultan household and you know bodyguards. It was started by Sultan Murad I, who was the third Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. And Janissaries were a force of Christian men recruited from the Eastern Balkan states. Who are the Balkan states? They are the small states near to Russia. And they also include the soldiers from the different Turkish tribes as well. So as you can see in the picture, this was an elite infantry. Or you can see a personal bodyguards of the Sultan of the Ottomans. The next is the Millets. Now what are the Millets? Millets was, uh, were an independent judiciary structure. You can also call them as the small courts. And they were meant for the minorities. Minorities mean especially the non-Muslim communities. These non-Muslim communities or every religious community had a separate judicial structure, they had separate courts and they were subjected to their own laws and the old value system. For example, that if Christians are living in Ottoman Empire, then those Christians would have a separate setup of judiciary and a separate laws which would be just followed by the Christian community. And the last is the education in the Ottoman Empire. So just like the millets, all the religious groups were allowed to establish their own system of education and education was divided into ethnic and religious bases. Every religious community was allowed to impart their own education to uh, their community. And as far as Muslims were concerned, Muslims had their own traditional style of schooling based on maktibs and madrasas. And the basic teachings that were being taught in the madrasas were to read Quran, write in Arabic, the basics of the Islam, and by teaching the Islamic morals and values to the children. And all the maktib schools were funded by the Ottoman sultans. So that's it for today. Let's talk about uh, your assignment. So dear students, you're supposed to read the following topics from the book, The Slim One, Suleiman the Magnificent, and Significant Features of the Ottoman Empire. And afterwards, study the pictures and information prompts carefully and highlight the important points on the book. Also prepare a bank of words you find difficult and new topics in, uh, and new in the topics and also write the meanings of those difficult words as well. And finally, maintain a small notepad or booklet for new vocabulary. You're supposed to make this world bank on the book and search on internet and collect pictures of the artifacts from the Ottoman culture and write description about them in your notepad or booklet. So that's it for today. If you have any further queries, then you can ask with your respective history teachers. Thank you very much for today. Take care and have a nice day.